Assalamualaikum dear students and welcome back to Learn Daily Physics. So proceeding our previous lecture, from previous lecture we have derived this equation and understand what this equation mean. So just like this v of y, we have to calculate v of x and v of z. So for the calculation of v of y and v of z, we have done that I wrote this equation here same as it is equation number 6 and then I took the time derivative of this equation okay the thing what you have done is you have taken the time derivative of this equation and the, when you take the time derivative this is e power iota omega ct it will come multiply it will be multiplied here the power comes here when we take the derivative and it will be the iota into iota and iota into iota it will be iota square and the iota square will be equal to minus 1 this minus 1 will invert these signs here so here it was plus minus and in the next step it will be minus plus because of that iota square so this will be the value of vy dot equals to minus plus this is a factor equals to this term so we have another equation first equation equation number two if you have seen your equation the coupled equation equation number two you can see that vy dot is equals to minus plus mega c v of x this was our equation number two as you in previous lecture we've derived so from this equation you can see that v of x is equal to this term goes here in the denominator and divides with this term and v of x is equal to this term okay so now we have the value of this v y dot here this is the value putting this value in this equation we will get this term and these terms will be cancelled out and the value of v x will be v of x will be equal to alpha e power iota omega c t okay so now we have calculated we already calculated the value of alpha in the previous lectures so if you have, haven't seen them you better see them first so alpha is equal to v perpendicular how this is v equal to v perpendicular you have to go back to my previous lectures for that so now v of x is already been Found. so you can say this is an, an equation number b okay so we have find v of x now we have to find v of z for the v of z we go back to equation number three this is of equation number three and equation number three is written like this here this is equation number three from here i wrote this here and this equation number 3 is a derivative dv we can write this vz of dot as dvz over dt and when we take the integral of this equation and d, dt goes and multiplies here then we take the integration from vz not some arbitrary origin arbitrary origin uh, where the t is equal to 0 and this is the v of z where the t uh, where the time is equal to t so integrating this we have this equation and after that the v of z is equal to this term okay we can write this equation number c you can make its real part an imaginary part like i've done before in my previous lectures my previous lectures was uh, the introductory lecture I have to introduce every possibility from that so I've separated every real part imaginary part just like that you can also find out real and imaginary part in this case but we don't need to find out these okay it's enough for our topic and now we have calculated v of y you can put alpha is equal to v perpendicular here and this is equation number a you can say that this is equation number six and equation number a also so equation number a b and c is telling us about the v of y v of x and v of z so we can draw the trajectory now we know their velocities okay 
their velocities can be integrated and we can know their position now we know their velocities and as you look in the v of z this v of z tells us that the there is an increase of velocity this is its original when t was equal to 0 uh, origin at the start its velocity was this then at time t this velocity increased by that fa this factor by this time a dependent factor okay so v of z is increasing okay there is a little bit v a change in the v of y this is the change there is v of x I think v of x is same as before. So now we will have a trajectory. We will have the trajectory of the plasma. The, the velocities in three dimension of this plasma will be given in our book of f chain. I'm not going to redraw it. And it is like this. Okay. And why they are drawing this e cross b. Our next topic of discussion will be to drive this v perpendicular gc this is the drift velocity and how this drift velocity comes out to be like this we have to find out that value so now from this v of x v of y and v of z you can make a graph like this i have told you already that how to make a graph i have shown you the animations that how this gyration takes place okay so start from the beginning I'm telling you that if you want to understand, okay, you have to start from the beginning. Uh, you have to take it from my starting lectures of plasma physics. If you're, you're new newbie here, then you have to start from the beginning that you can understand how this gyration is taking place. I've put my animations there in the previous lectures. Some graphs are detailed in, are discussed in detail. So from that you can make a graph like this and you can draw that how these are you can understand how these velocities are discussed like this. So I hope this graph is represent can be represented like that and the main issue now we have is this. So let's calculate in our next lecture that how this drift velocity is equal to e cross b into our b square